Today, as I'm finishing my latest build, let's talk about the DNSS receivers, how to set up them and configure in Betaflight and what to avoid. And also, let's answer the question on which GPS module you should get, because the answer is not that obvious. Let's go. This is a GPS module. However, the correct term is the GNSS receiver. GPS is only one of the satellite navigation systems available. And all the GNSS receivers we are using right now are fully capable of talking to almost all of them. To keep things simple, let's continue calling them the GPS receivers. Technically we shouldn't, but let's do it anyway. The most popular GPS modules we use in the RC and FPV hobby are all equipped with the chipsets from the company called Ublox. Of course, not counting clones and fakes. Ublox offers or was offering different generations of their chipsets. We had M6s, M8s, M9s and M10s. Which one to pick? Well, most probably M8. They are usually reasonably priced and offer enough of the tracking capabilities for our usage. You know, filters, accuracy, acquisition time, all that stuff that allows you to get the GPS fix fast and in any conditions. If you want something fancier, then you might think about M9. And if you want the best of the best of the best we have right now for our drones, it would be most probably one of M10s. However, please avoid M6s. This is 2023. It's really time to let them go. In the description of this video, you will find a list of the GPS receiver modules that I personally recommend. Some of them are cheap, some of them are good and some of them are just somewhere in between. Now that we covered the Ublox chipset generation, let's talk about one more feature. It's the presence of lack of it of magnetometer. Magnetometer is a fancy little sensor that measures the magnetic field and can be used to determine where north is. And this information is required to be able to control the position while stationary or moving with low velocity. The downside of having and using the magnetometer is that it's sensitive to any source of the magnetic fields and has to be calibrated. Luckily for the Betaflight it doesn't really matter because Betaflight doesn't use the magnetometer. The GPS rescue Betaflight offers is using only course over ground when your multi-rotor drone is moving and it's moving fast enough to have the reliable course over ground. Yes, no position hold and landing can be uh-uh, but it will get you home in a relatively safe way. How to distinguish the GPS module with magnetometer from the one without the magnetometer? Super simple. The GPS modules equipped with magnetometers will have six wires. The GPS modules without magnetometer will have four wires because magnetometer in like 99% of the cases is connected via the separate I2C bus while the GPS receivers itself via the serial port. So which one to choose with or without? Well, it depends. Pants. The advantage of using the GPS module with the magnetometer is usually that you can get the better quality receiver. Like the M9 I have over here or M10 over here. You cannot really get them without the magnetometer. If you want the best possible quality, you might just be forced to buy the GNSS receiver with the magnetometer built in. However, you do not have to connect it. Just don't. Yes, slightly more pricey than the BN180 or BN220, but with much better quality. Like said before, links to some GPS module examples I personally recommend with and without the magnetometer are in the description. This video was created thanks to my Patreons and YouTube channel members. Thank you guys, you're the main reason this channel keeps going and I have the motivation to record more videos like this. If you're not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks 
a month. When this is covered, let's talk about where to put it. Or rather, where not to put your GPS receiver. Far from any kind of radio interference sources. And this includes, but is not limited to, video transmitters. This includes both analog and digital, radio receivers with telemetry capability, especially any kind of 900 megabytes megahertz radios like the crossfire and surprise surprise HD cameras like GoPro. They all emit quite a lot of RF noise that can interfere with the satellite acquisition. As the result, the fix might take very long time. Even when you get the fix, it can be a low quality and drop out any moment during the flight. And in general, you might just risk losing your craft. And no, you do not have to install the mast. Most probably the best place to install the GNSS receiver is behind the rear arms. Usually works like the charm. If you do things right, there is not that much of the interference in this place. During the crash, the rear arms and the motors will just protect your GPS receiver from being damaged or destroyed. All my drones have GPSs in this place and it's working like a charm. The last question is, should you install it flat with the top deck like this or tilted? And the answer is that as long as you do not use the magnetometer, it doesn't really matter. You will not get the better GPS reception by tilting the receiver. Uh -uh. It's a myth. What you will get, because yeah, you get something, is slightly better aerodynamics. But when you are using the magnetometer, it kinda complicates the process, because you have to tell the flight controller what is the angle on which the magnetometer is installed. But one more time, in case of the beta flight, it doesn't really matter. Because beta flight does not have the position hold and does not use the magnetometer. Problem? solved. Wiring is also simple. You only have to find a free serial port on your flight controller and wire ground to ground, plus 5 volt to plus 5 volt, TX to RX and RX to TX. Of course, with magnetometer you also have to wire SDA to SDA and SCL to SCL. But one more time, for beta flight, it doesn't really matter. As I have the Betaflight 4.4 already flashed, let's connect and let's configure everything. The step number one is of course to configure the serial port on which you have your GPS connected. In my case it's the serial port 2, so just select the sensor input GPS, save and reboot. In most of the cases this is really the only thing that you have to do because Betaflight has some settings already enabled. And if you want to keep it simple this is all that you really have to do. However there are a few things that we can adjust. The GPS configuration is in the configuration tab over here in the bottom on the left side. First thing that we have to analyze is the used protocol. Betaflight defaults to the Ublox protocol and this is the GPS protocol you should use. Do not, and I repeat, do not use the NMEA protocol if you really don't have to. And if you are using any of the modern GPS receivers, there is not a single good reason to use NMEA protocol. Just go with Ublox. Why? Because Ublox is faster, it's binary, it's two-directional, it allows to auto-configure the GNSS receiver and it offers everything that NMEA lacks. While NMEA is text-based, single-directional, doesn't allow any kind of the auto-configuration and in general it sucks. The only theoretical advantage of the NMEA protocol is that then you do not have to wire the GPS RX pad. It's one-way protocol so you do not have to do it. But is saving one wire really worth losing all the advantages the Ublox protocol gives you? I don't think so. 
so. And unless you have the special MSP enabled GNSS receiver from Matek, the MSP option also does not apply to you at all. The next is auto bout. By default it's off and I recommend leaving this thing off. The default speed of 57,000 baud is just fine for all the use cases we have. Only if you are having problems with getting the connection to the GPS receiver and the icon is not turning yellow, then you might try lowering the bot speed to for example 19,000 bots. The next option is auto config and for the Oblox protocol it should stay on. Then we have the option to use the Galileo. Galileo is the European GNSS system. Basically all Ublox M8 and newer have the support for the Galileo. If you live and fly in Europe you should absolutely enable Galileo. If you live in other parts of the world it's still an option. Your receiver still should be able to pick some Galileo satellite. There is just a bigger chance you will pick one when you are some somewhere in Europe, but it still might happen everywhere else. And then there is the option of set home point once. My opinion is set it to on. In majority of the practical scenarios it's safer to set the home point once after powering your quad. Practical scenario, be my guest. You fly one kilometer away. You are relatively high, you disarm by accident. It happens. You are a good and experienced pilot, you were able to rearm your quad in the air and you continue the flight. Two kilometers away you get into the failsafe. The question where the quad would return, to you or to the place when you armed for the last time? Of course, the later option. This kind of the problems are resolved when you set set home point once. If you have a different practical scenario, of course you might set it to off. And finally, there is an option to set ground assistance type, which by default is set to none. In practical scenarios we use in our drones, it doesn't really matter. Most probably you will get no gain from enabling the regional ground assistance provider at all. Just leave it to none. Next is to verify that your GPS is working like expected. First is the GPS icon over here. If it's yellow that means that there is a communication between the GNSS receiver and the flight controller. It doesn't mean that there is a fix. It only means that the GPS is correctly configured. And the fix might come later or never, but this is completely independent problem. If the icon is yellow, you're golden. If it's not, then check the wiring, check the configuration, try to find out why your configuration or wiring is not like it should be. Usually it's something stupid like for example wrong serial port chosen or just the GPS module is dead or not powered. Believe me, it happens. In our case it's yellow so let's continue. The state of the GPS fix is reported on the setup tab over here in the GPS section. As you can see right now we do not have the fix, we have locked zero satellites and some position numbers that are not really correct. I'm indoors, there's rain, it's heavy clouds, it's not expected that in those conditions inside my GPS module will get a fix. And by the way you Usually getting a fix inside of the building is at least problematic. This is the basic set of the GPS related information. If you enable the expert mode you will see the GPS tab which allows you to get much more data. Some of the information you will see over here is new, some of them is repeated. The new thing is definitely the list of the GPS satellites your GPS module is currently tracking. When your GPS module will be able to track enough of the satellites, it should be able to get the fix. And then the 3D fix will turn to green true and you will get the real coordinates plus the map which should be displayed over here will show you where your UAV 
is. We unfortunately will see nothing today. I'm inside, it's raining, heavy clouds. <sighs> Not a chance I will get a 3D fix today. The GPS receiver as it is is working. The remaining configuration is to tell Betaflight of what to do with the GPS coordinates. A. We can enable the GPS rescue on the failsafe. This is located in the failsafe mode and by default the failsafe procedure will be dropped. If we want our quad to return in case of the failsafe, then you have to select the GPS rescue procedure. Personally, the only modification to the defaults would be to lower the minimum satellites. 8 satellites is ok, however on some lower quality GPS modules you might have problem with getting 8 tracking satellites. And then the GPS rescue will just not work if you have only 7, even though the current coordinates are so-so. Personally, I would lower this value to 6, as 6 is a threshold of having the practical 3D fix. And finally, there is this setting, allow arming without fix. It's off by default and if you ask me, it should stay off by default. Because to have GPS rescue operational, the beta flight has to know where it has to return. Yes, I know, you cannot arm without the fix in this configuration, ok, but if you enable this, then you basically lose the GPS rescue because see this warning over here? GPS rescue will not be available. What's the point of enabling the GPS rescue and then, well, disabling it by allowing to arm without the fix? Come on, well, it doesn't make any sense. If you want to fly without the fix, just set it to drop procedure. Why to have this extra thing over here at all? The other option we have is that we can enable the GPS rescue as one of our flight modes and we can enable it by flipping a switch on our radio transmitter. The configuration is exactly like in case of any other flight mode, so you just add the range, ensure it's auto, flip a switch, beta flight, picks up which channel was used and you're golden. And of course we can add the GPS information to our OSD by enabling for example latitude, longitude, sats, and speed. Home direction and home distance are also kinda useful. And of course we can arrange our OSD like we want it to have. Your Betaflight 4.4 is now configured to work with the GPS receiver. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!